Hi, science friends. We are wrapping up this unit. This is the last lesson, which is finishing out colligative properties, doing a few different calculations with that today. Um, so next week we will do um, a couple of labs and then a day of review, and then you should anticipate a test um, about the middle of next week. So yesterday we talked about three different colligative properties. Um, so remember, colligative properties are properties when you have um, a you have a solvent, um, and then when you add a solute to that solvent, it changes the properties of those solvent of the solvent. And so those properties that are changed um, based on the amount of solute that you add is are referred to as colligative properties. So we discussed three of them: um, vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, and freezing point depression. So when you add a solute, it's going to lower the vapor pressure, it's going to lower the freezing point, and it's going to raise the boiling point. So let's look today at the calculations that we're going to do um, with the boiling point and freezing point. So when we look at boiling point, we look at what's called the molal boiling point elevation constant, and that is Kb. And so Kb is equal to the change of the boiling point for one molal um, solution of a non-volatile molecular sol solute. So that means when we add, when we make a one molal solution um, with any solute and compare that to the plain um, solvent, then the change per one molal of the solute is equal to Kb. And so Kb is a constant. This table shows some common Kb values. You'll always be given these numbers in your calculations. You don't have to memorize or know any of them. Um, you will always be given them. Note, though, the units um, on Kb. Now, you do have to memorize the formula, um, and you'll need to know the units on Kb. But as far as these values, you don't have to memorize those. So let's talk about this formula for a second. So this first one we have is um, the triangle, um, which I don't know that we've ever talked about this triangle. The triangle stands for the Greek letter delta, and delta means change, okay? The T, that should be quotation mark, stands for temperature. So this is the change in temperature, but specifically the change in the boiling temperature. That's what this little B here is for. Um, and sometimes I think I used it capital and sometimes I used it lowercase. I don't know that it really, I think technically it's supposed to be lowercase. Um, but that's what that is. The change in the boiling temperature is, is delta Tb, okay? And then we have this Kb, which is again the constant for a one molal solution, and then times lowercase m. So this is our molality, okay? Um, and so, depending on how much, um, how many mole, um, how much of a molal solution we have, then that's going to change the change in temperature. All right. Now we can do the same thing for freezing point. So your constants are going to change. So these values in the freezing point are different than those values in the boiling point. Um, but your formula pretty much stays the same. Um, so we've got the change in freezing temperature the Kf and the molality, again, um, makes our molal freezing point depression constant, okay? So let's put some of these to practice, and I did forget to give you those numbers there, so I just kind of um, wrote them in. So this one says, what is the boiling point of a 1.5 molal sodium chloride solution? So we need to first write down our equation. So it's talking about boiling, so we're gonna want to do the one that deals with boiling. So delta Tb equals Kb times molality, okay? So we know the problem tells us that our Kb is this number, the 0 0.512 degrees C per molal, okay? And then we are gonna solve for this. What is the boiling point? So we're trying to look at the change 
Um, so this is what we're going to solve for. Now, this says it's a salt solution. It doesn't specifically say it's in water, but since I give you the water um, um, KB value, then you know that it's in water. So normally we know that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, okay? So what we're gonna find here is the change. How much does it fluctuate from 100 degrees Celsius when we add a one and a half um, or when we make a one and a half molal salt solution, okay, instead of just pure water. So now this is the tricky part. When you t write in the molality, you can't just use this one and a half, okay? That would be wrong, all right? We have to look at what it is. This is one and a half mol molal sodium chloride. Now remember yesterday, we talked about that ionization constant. When sodium chloride breaks up into ions in water, it breaks up into two ions, a sodium ion and a chlorine ion. So its ionization constant is two. So we have to take that two and multiply it by 1.5 and plug that number, which would be 3.0, two times 1.5 is 3.0, in for our molality. Okay, um, and I'll write that as M molality. Okay, 3.0 molal uh, solution. Okay, so then when I solve this, I'm just going to, if I can find my calculator, multiply, excuse me, 0. 0.512 times 3. And so what I should get is the change in the boiling point is 1.54. Um, the M's are going to cross out, and it will leave me with degrees Celsius, okay? Now, remember, this is boiling point elevation. So, pure water, we said, would boil at 100 degrees Celsius. But if we have a one and a half molal salt water solution, it's going to boil at 101.54 degrees Celsius, okay? And so that's what that means. What is the boiling point to truly answer the question? This is the answer to the question. What is the boiling point? It doesn't ask us the change in temperature. We had to find that to get to this, okay? So 101.54 degrees Celsius is the correct answer. And you can always express these just in degrees Celsius, okay? Um, so you have a practice problem here to try. Um, and then, so pause me, and then we'll take a look at it together. All right, let's take a look at this one together. There was kind of a lot going on in this problem. So the correct answer here is 101.37 degrees Celsius. Um, so let's talk about that for, for a minute. So we use the same setup with the same equation that we did previously. Um, the change in temperature of the boiling point is equal to Kb times the molality. Um, so we, we plugged that 0.512 in for Kb. Now, the molality part. I would almost guess that some of you used this, but that is 1.25 moles, okay? M-O-L is moles. If you see M-O-L, that's moles. If you see M-O-L-A-L, -L, that's molality. And so those are different things. Moles is a quantity, like a dozen. It's a number of particles or a number of pieces. Um, so we can use that, though, to find molality. Remember, molality is equal to the moles of the solute over the kilograms of the solvent. So our molality is 1.25 moles of the solute, which is calcium chloride, over 1,400 grams, which is 1.4 kilograms of solvent. And so I have plugged that in right here, 1.25 moles over 1.4 um, kilogram. And if you wanted to do that kind of in a separate step and then just plug your answer in, that would have been totally fine too. Um, either way would have been perfect. 
Now, remember, we also have to multiply by our ionization constant to still get that molality. And so here, the ionization constant is three because we have the calcium and the two chlorines when that breaks apart in solution, okay? So um, when I multiplied the first two pieces together, I got 0.457 and then times that three, because honestly, I almost left that off at first. Um, and then I remembered. And so what I got was 1.37 degrees Celsius. So again, we're doing this in water. Normally the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So it's going to raise it. So now our boiling point um, of this solution made with 1.25 moles of calcium chloride and 1400 grams of water is going to be 101.37 degrees Celsius, okay? All right, there's one last problem style that I wanna show you here, and this one is a little bit tricky, okay? So hang with me here. Um, a solution of seven and a half grams of a non-volatile compound um, in 22.6 grams of water boils at 100.78 degrees Celsius at 780 millimeter mercury. So let's pause there. 780 millimeter mercury. If we're using this boiling point equation, which we know that we are because it's talking about boiling point, we have no need for this pressure, okay? That is extraneous information. We can't do anything with that. What is the molar mass of the solute? Okay, so we are trying to find molar mass. Now it says, assume that the solute exists as molecules and not ions. What that is telling us is that our ionization constant is one, okay? If it's ions, then that's when they split into, into multiple pieces in solution, which affects your mol uh, molality. But this doesn't, it exists as a molecule, and so it stays intact and has an ionization constant of one, okay? Um, so let's look at what we've got here. Let's write down our formula that we're gonna use first. So uh, delta T B is equal to KB times molality. Now we know that our KB is going to be this 0.512 degrees Celsius per, per moles, okay? Times, um, we don't really see a molality given. Let's look and see if we see a change in temperature, okay? Now, our change in temperature isn't given really obviously, but it is given. It says that this water solution boils at 100.78 degrees Celsius. Well, we know that the normal boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. So that means our change then is 0.78 degrees Celsius, okay? And so what we're gonna be solving for is the molality. So if we take our calculator and divide 0.78, divided by 0.512, then we get our molality to be 1.52 moles, okay, or M. Now, remember what that means is 1.52 moles of solute per kilogram of solvent, okay? That's important, we're gonna use that, okay? So let's start with that, 1.52 moles solute per kilogram. Um, I'm gonna put kilogram of water because that's what our solvent is here, okay? Now, if we look in our problem, it tells us that we have 22.6 grams of water. So in kilograms, that would be equal to 0 0.02260 kilograms of water. You have to move that decimal three places to the left. So one, two, three, okay? so. I'm gonna multiply that here, 0 0.0226 kilograms of water, okay? 
Um, and that'll cross out. And so what it leaves me with here is 1.5 moles. Uh, I'm sorry, 1.52 times 0 0.0226. And so it is 0 0.034 moles of solute. Okay? 0 0.034 moles of solute. Now, I still have to find my molar mass, okay? But if I know the moles and I know how much mass I have of it, then I can find my molar mass. So I take 0 0.034 um, moles um, and I'm gonna put seven and a half grams over top of it, okay? So seven and a half divided by 0 0.034, and it gives me 220.6 grams per mole. And that is the answer, okay? So we took a few steps to get there. We found our molality first. We used that to find the moles of solute and then we use the moles to find the molar mass, okay? You have one to try very similar to this. This one instead uses the freezing point formula, um, which is exact same, except you just plug in um, the Fs, you exchange the Bs for Fs, and your uh, constant that you're gonna use is not that 0.052 anymore. It is 1.86, okay? So you try this one, and then come back and check with me in just a moment. So let's take a look at this one together. You should have gotten 39.07 grams per mole or something pretty close to that. Um, so everything with this one was just like the example problem. So we were given the change in temperature um, and so that was 0 0.390, I plugged in here for um, delta TF, okay? We were given our 1.86, which went in for the KF, and then what we were solving for was molality. So I found molality, 0 0.39 divided by 1.86 was 0 0.21 molal solution, okay? I really hate saying that word. Um, and so what that really means is 0 0.21 moles of solute per kilogram of solvent, okay? I carried that down here, 0.21 moles of solute per kilogram of solvent, and I multiplied by 0.475, which is how many grams of that water solvent I had. It said 0.475 grams, that makes it 0.475 kilograms, okay? So that gave me 0 0.00998 moles of solute, okay? Now, the molar mass, uh, or the mass that it gave me, not the molar mass, but the mass that it gave me was 3.9. So I put 3.9 divided by those number of moles there, and I came up with the 39.07 grams per mole, okay? So hopefully you got that, um, and if you didn't, then hopefully the explanation helped you so that you can get them on your assignment. So you have a few problems to work with these today. If you have any questions, let me know. And if not, then you all have a great day.